This is Channel 69 News, coming to you straight out of North Korea, with our two anchors, Dick Copperfield and Hugh Schlong. Take I, it away. How are you doing today, Hugh Schlong? I'm actually doing very great, Dick. Um, how are you? I am fantastic, erect with happiness. So what's the first story we have today, Dick? Well, Hugh Schlong, uh, our first story has, deals with politics, government, and war. All hail Kim Jong Un. <laughs> All right. So recently, China recovers World War II medal stolen from a Taiwan museum. Taiwanese police say Chinese police have recovered a stolen medal that had been presented to a World War II general by nationalist leader Chiang Kai-shek. That's far fetched. Sounds like a Star Wars name, Kashyyyk. Kinda. Kashyyyk is a planet. The it Wookies is. Live there. The Wookiees. <laughs> You're right, you're right. Uh -huh. Thank you. The Bureau of Criminal Investigation said the silver medal awarded to the General Hugh, Hugh, Lean, Hugh Lean was stolen last week from a museum, museum on the Taiwanese island of Kinmen. Now that is, that is just sad. It's, it's pathetic. I don't know why anybody would even think about stealing a medal from Neither World do I. How much do you think one of those medals would uh, go for in the black market? Well, they're, they're, they're Pretty big and heavy, Slum. So close to a kidney. Probably. Do you, do you know how much a kidney like goes for? I'm not. I'm not in that. Not anymore. <coughs> it's been in my past. No. All right. I'm not sure how much a kidney will go for in the black market nowadays. Very good. Very good. Thank you. All right. So Hugh led nationalist troops fighting. Japanese invaders in China between 1937 and 1945. Very good year. Almost as old as I am. And he died in Taiwan in 1977. The Bureau's statement on Wednesday said the medal was recovered from a Chinese man who visited the Taiwanese museum last week. The Bureau said the man was arrested and expected China to return the medal. I mean, why wouldn't they? You know? Well, there's reasons. Black market reasons, obviously. But I'm sure they would return the medal to a truck. Very good point, Inchlong. Okay, so what story do you have next? Well, we're taking on the economy now, North Korea. Not really North Korea, but in the Central East Asia, Asia area. East Asia. Right. Yeah. Um, unstable weather and national hazards, weaken economies, reports say. National disasters, unstable weather, and global warming may have a significant impact on economies, causing treats, velocity, and political misjudgment, according to a report from the UK. Who listens to the UK, though? <laughs> That's a good question, man. Yeah. Not us. Definitely not. Go ahead. Oh, but investment manager of Standard Life Investments, LTD, reported this. But if you all remember, the tsunami in Japan last year disrupted global supply chains and shook the future of nuclear power worldwide. The fund manager said in Global Perspectives report, Hurricane Katrina, which hit New Orleans back in 05, caused property damage more than $80 billion. And direct losses associated with a giant in and direct losses associated with a drought in China last year were more than one billion dollars. One billion dollars worth of water? One billion dollars worth of water. I use that in my shower like daily. You know how much water I use in that? Close to five hundred and twenty six gallons. That's pretty accurate. It's it's more like five forty, but I mean that was within like sixteen or fourteen or my uncle used to be in the water treatment business. Really? He did. So why did you to do news. Apart from the natural disasters, rather than less extreme weather events such as bad winters, hurricanes, and floods have also complicated the economic landscape. Douglas Roberts, a senior international economist at Standard Life, said in an email statement today, pollution and environment dam environmental damage cost China about 4% of gross domestic product each year, the report said, citing Chinese government estimates. That's very interesting, Slav. That is not really, but... All right, so next we have Ponyo Zeshai with the sports. Ponyo's a great reporter. All right. Thank you, Ponyo Zenshai. That was, that was quite, the, quite the basketball story. You know, nothing is more exciting than uh, Asian basketball. I can actually think of quite a few things that are more exciting than <laughs> Asian basketball. That's true. What do you think is more entertaining, the WNBA or Asian men's basketball? The scores both stay in the close to 15s and 30s. They both, both athletes, I mean, demand a close to $30,000 a year. 
<laughs> Dude, that's, that's just so much, you know. I, that's that's pretty hard, you know. I that could I'm, buy you a new phone. It could. I think. Well, okay, let's get real. Anything, everything's better than WNBA. That's right. So Asian men's basketball would probably be my favorite sport to watch. I'd have to say. Yes. All right. That's the conclusion. Um, Asian men's basketball wins. Asian men's basketball it is. Next up, have you ever seen the movie The Hunger Games? Hasn't seen Hunger Games. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. The international mega hit film The Hunger Games has been approved for release in China in June, following its record-breaking success in America and elsewhere. The film will be released nationwide in China in the first half of June in subtitled prints. Said I'm Lionsgate. Go ahead. I'm really glad the uh, Chinese government is letting Hungry Games appear in their country. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty. I'm. Isn't Cat Cat Ness? Isn't she like half Chinese or something? Or is she just full on American? I think she's full on American. We're thrilled that we can now share the exciting first installment of the Hunger Games franchise with Chinese moviegoers, said Lionsgate Motion Picture Group co chairs Patrick Washenberger and Rob Friedman. I've actually hung out with both of those gentlemen at a party I was at in really? um, New Zealand. Yes. They're both very into uh, Komodo Dragon Venom. Really? You know, I met uh, Rob Friedman and he claimed to have climbed five mountains in his life. I couldn't believe that for a moment. Living in New Zealand where they filmed Lord of the Rings, you know, they have some pretty huge mountains there. Like, I wonder if he went into the volcano on Mount Doom. He probably did. Or he's quite the adventurous individual. He seemed pretty adventurous. Yes, he's quite the mountain person. So, he also said that China is already one of the leading territories in the international box office, and the launch of the Hunger Games is a key market to another sign of the franchise continuing emergence as a truly global phenomenon. All right, now get this. The movie, which premiered in the U.S. in March, had already grossed nearly $620 million. Not quite the billion-dollar water debt that, Not quite. that they had, uh, but the box office, including... $380 million in North America, where it's the 13th highest grossing film of all time. You know what's in front of that? The Avatar, Godfather 1, Godfather 2, all three Lord of the Rings, two Star Wars, and 300. It's pretty true. Which yeah. Star Wars ones? Episode 3 and Episode 6. I three, believe. I would hope 3 is above 6. Yeah, because 3 was the best. I, I very much agree. I have a movie poster in my room. Me too. I have one right there. So, next we move on to environmental news. Environmental Take it away, Yves Long. Make it big. China has begun deep, deep drilling in South China Sea. This report from Beijing. China's first deep water drilling rig restarted operations in South China at 9.38 precisely a.m. Wednesday, making a substantial step made by the county's deep sea oil industry. The sixth generation semi-submersible Kunuk or CNOOC 981, owned by a national, China National Offshore Oil Corporation, began drilling in a sea area 320 kilometers southeast of Hong Kong at a water depth of 1,500 meters. It is the first independent deep water oil drilling to be conducted by a Chinese company, and China is the first company to explore deep, deep water oil and gas resources in Was South China Sea. If I had to say how deep it was... How deep was it? It went quite deep, Dick. It was deep... How deep compared to the one in the Gulf of Mexico that exploded? Quite much deeper. Or Very quite deep. deeper. So, quite they, deep. so they're like a deep in China, right? I have to say, Chinese, the Chinese really like it deep. The deeper, the better, Dick. Right, though. That was very fascinating information about deep, deep deep drilling in China. I think the main thing we learned here is the Chinese really, really do like it deeper. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that. I heard that China really, they drill really, really deep because the deeper they go, the like richer the material. And like the more, mm -hmm. you know, have you ever touched oil? How it's kind of like... I have touched oil. Yeah, the deeper they go, the more like rich the oil really is. Like, I've heard like, that. If you go like that, it just spreads through all of your fingers. It doesn't like drip apart or anything. Exactly. You know? And I've learned, but the one thing they do have to worry about with going that deep is scarring of the ocean floor. The last thing that you want to do is scar the ocean floor. Because it's there forever, Dick. So it says here <coughs> they have yet to scar the ocean floor. Do you think they're actually going to scar it? Because, I mean, that's that's territorial damage. Like those. But one of the main things, we can either go two ways here with Chinese. They do like it deep, as we pointed out. 
But if you put a protective, <coughs> protective barrier over the drill, it prevents the scarring from going that deep. That is a very good point. You know, mm -hmm. did you? Are you sure your father didn't work for the, or your uncle or whoever it was worked for the oil company, not water? Oh, I have plenty of relatives that worked in the deep, deep drilling industry. I actually thought about going into it myself. So why'd you become a news reporter? Uh, well, I think, I think it's we're gonna go to that. weather. <clears throat> Touchy um, subject, I guess. All right, go ahead, baby. Well, go ahead, Sean. Thank you, Dick. We have weather with Ponyo. Weather. We do. Weather in East Asia. Man, that's some scary stuff. Right? It is yeah, scary man. stuff. Yeah, you know, those those tsunamis, they are they are extremely un unfortunate for the people living in the area. They just they just disrupt the water so much. The water gets all gross and oily and it's just it's just not right. You it's know? actually it's, really bad for the water drilling in the South Asian or South Chinese Sea. It actually disables the ability to find the drill hole. That is, that is more unfortunate than disrupting the ter territory and the animals, lizards, Godzillas that live in that area, you know? It's oh, just... yes, of course. The animals, they don't matter. It's, it's the scarring of the ocean floor that we care about. Yes, we cannot... They, the scarring the floor and the oil spilling everywhere, it just makes it all, like, like gross. You know, I, just, I just don't like dirty water. It's, Neither do I. If I had to pick one word to describe dirty water, it'd be icky, Dick. You know, that's that's a perfect word for it. Icky. Icky. Icky schlong. That schlong. That is just. You know, that is that's the perfect word. That's exactly. It was like right on the very on the tip of my tongue. Do you see it? I. That's. <laughs> that's. It was right there. I just couldn't think of it. It's right there. That, it was right there. It's right right on the tip. Okay. Go but actually, schlong. going into the weather right now with Ponyo, he's actually out at the South Chinese Sea while tsunami's going on. That is. That's dangerous. That is dangerous. Why don't you just pan over to him? Alright. Do you, Panya? Oh, I shank your deck. I shank your song. Oh, <laughs> the weather is very scary right now. This is this is uh, China and North Korea. And outside there is the very windy, the water. Do you have the, uh, the tsunami? The big way, very big. Me, very small. And as you see, it's very, very windy, very wet. This is a, this is a tsunami season in Korea and China. And uh, me very small, very scared. As you see, the wind, the wind come in, it come in, it stir up, stir up water, stir up water. It's very cold, very wet. Me, uh, pin your chain, me very scared. It's very scary out here. You know, they have me out at my first time, my first time, first time for many things. And it's a tsunami season in Korea and China. It stir up the water, stir up water, it mess up Chinese drilling hole, Chinese drilling hole. The, the, the shaft, the shaft for the drilling hole, very, very small. And it's tough to get in the hole when the water is all stirred up from the, from the, the, the tsunami, from the, from the storm. It's very scary. It's getting windier. It's getting windier. And, uh, and uh, the rain is coming down. It's very scary. And oh no, I don't want Godzilla. Legend has it when it gets cold and want Godzilla. Godzilla comes out during tsunami season, which is right now. I know. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, it's got Ura! It's got Ura! Oh no! Dude, we, we just lost. Never mind, um, that's, yup, he's dead. We lost Ponyo. He was a great reporter, I'll miss him. Me too. You know, I worked with him for like, 45 minutes now, and it's just... He was a great kid. He was... A lot of life. A very young lad. A lot of life. Alright, we have his... Even better, we have his twin brother. His name's Turbo Zenshai. Cheeto? Turbo. Like, like a car. Oh, that's my dealer's name. My car dealer. Oh, okay. <laughs> you me scared there, Sean. Alright, well, so we're going to Turbo Zenshai for our human interest story. Let's go, Turbo. To you, Turbo. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. Thanks, Schlong. My brother died? Uh. Alright. Uh, I'm Turbo. And a uh, human interest story uh, for the day. About this uh, little Chinese, little Chinese man. Actually from North Korea, to be politically correct. <laughs> and, uh. 
His name is uh, Little uh, Zing Pao Yang. Yeah. And actually, it's a touching story. It gets me real down deep. It's Chinese people always get down deep, it seems. And uh, this young man, he was uh, from North Korea. You know, it's tough there. That, they got that little, that little dude that runs, runs, uh, he runs that town. And uh, makes it a real tough world, but this little dude, he worked on the border. And uh, his mother was killed at a young age. His father was dead. He was basically an orphan. So he had no family to leave behind. And one day, when he had the opportunity, he got across that, that electric fence, that no man's land and he made it into South Korea, where he is now attending a university. He's making a life for himself. You know, that gets me down deep. Gets me down deep, Dick. Even a dude like me can be touched by that story. How deep did it, did it really touch you, though? It got, me, it got me down real deep, Dick. It got me down real deep. But that, Zhang, Pao Yang. So, uh, uh, tell me real quick, did, how, how old is this young man? When he, was run, when he got across the border, he's about 16 years old, and uh, he's now about 24, he's living happily in South Korea, and he's studying, studying uh, statistics. Really? Seems like a lot of those Chinese, Korean, whatever you'd like to call them, they, uh, they study statistics and uh, mathematical things. I, I don't know, real smart. I'm, I'm, I could never do it, but this little dude, he's got, he's got heart. He's got heart uh, in him, Dick. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, my name's Turbo. I'm, uh, I'm that, uh, that Asian dude's brother. I haven't seen that dude in forever. Pow? Panyo. Pa pa Panyo. Yes, uh, wh where are you from? Uh, me, I'm from, uh, from New York, triple threat, pretty much overall, overall, warm-blooded American, which is how I am. My brother, he's a, he's Asian, got separated birth. We're uh, twins, though. Yeah. How do you know your, your identical last name? Uh, yeah, Turbo. Uh, uh, well, you know, it's not about me. Uh. Back to you, Dick, with the, uh, the news. All right, that was hard to understand. Okay, next up we have your 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 favorite story. My personal favorite. Taiwan Ty girls, go ahead. Yeah, lay it on us. It's a great day in Taiwan. It's actually No Pants Day to save the environment. Today. Today. No, no pants today. No pants. And if you you we can't show the slides because they are a little graphic, but there are many Taiwanese girls pantless in the uh, subways that they Wow, that they is pantless. She is pantless. And so are all these girls. So tell us more about these uh, Taiwanese girls. Like, why, what, are they, <clears throat> what, are they, what are they doing it for? You, well, I'll get the article to you right now. Last week in Taiwan, a gaggle of young girls flaunted their assets at Taipei's MRT subway line. All the name in saving the world, of course, mirroring the famed No Pants subway ride. I got a few of those. Right. That has exploded in popularity in New York due to the efforts of groups from improv everywhere, the women, and some men, bared legs and smiles to a sea of gawkers in order to raise environmental awareness. The group boarded the MRT at 9 a.m. to the shock of commuters and workers alike, and were surrounded by cameras in no time. When asked about their motives, they responded that they would inject some excitement and liberation in their normally monotonous life, while also promoting energy conflict conservation and reduction of carbon emissions, presumably by attracting attention to Taiwan's MRT. The original, so original no-pants subway ride, which has been a popular reoccurring event since 2002, received 4,000 participants this year in New York and thousands more cities around the world. New York? New York. You been there? No. I'm going to now in 365 days, or 64 days. I have my book trip for the next four years. Oh. Alright, how much does that cost you? How many leg? Four. <laughs> I don't like you kidding about the black market after we <laughs> play kidney store. Unfortunate. Well, was, he, was that your cousin John or something like that? I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember either. How much are tickets to New York? Do you know? Well, I get them from a guy. 
You do. Yes. So like your, car, your car dealer is also your your flight insurance. Yes. Were you one of those uh, the men in quotation mark or in parentheses right there? I'm not gonna lie. When I was in my twenties, I had a face. I did. I was one of those. Well, I'm glad that you have, are out of that phase and are here sitting next to me, Shalom. I'm glad I'm sitting next to you, Dick. So, there there you have it. There's Channel 69 News with Hugh Schlong. And Dick. Dick Copperfield. And Dick Copperfield. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you this time next week.